Welcome to the chapter on phenytoin dosing and drug concentration predictions. Phenytoin has been used for many years as an anticonvulsant, and consequently a fairly large number of patients still receive the drug. Patients with new onset seizures are more frequently started on other medications these days. The most interesting aspect of phenytoin pharmacokinetics is its saturable elimination. Most drugs follow first-order elimination patterns, but phenytoin's elimination is best described by a michaelis menten saturation pattern. At low concentrations, it is primarily first order, whereas at high concentrations, it is better represented by zero order elimination. Due to this elimination, small changes in daily dose can produce a large changes in concentration, particularly at the upper end of the therapeutic range. In this video, we will estimate concentrations based on an administered dosing schedule and consider the impact of saturable elimination on average steady-state concentrations. Enjoy the video. As I discussed previously, phenytoin follows michaelis menten elimination or saturable elimination. When we have a drug that follows first-order elimination and we give a dose, it produces a certain concentration. If we double the dose, the concentration is doubled. This makes it easy to adjust doses and concentrations by using the proportionality of dose and concentration. When a drug follows saturable metabolism, or michaelis menten elimination, what happens is that the concentration initially follows first order elimination patterns, but as the concentration goes up, it begins to saturate, and once we approach Vmax, concentrations go up very rapidly with fairly small changes in dosage. Let's do a patient case to show how phenytoin can be dosed and the impact of small changes in dosing. We'll begin with a 25-year-old male patient who weighs 90 kilograms and whose ideal body weight is 70 kilograms. We're going to give him phenytoin for new onset seizures. What I want to do is determine a loading dose of phosphenytoin, which is given intravenously, for an estimated post-load concentration of 15 milligrams per liter. We're going to treat it as if it's given as an IV bolus, though the dose would actually be given over several minutes. Due to the low clearance of phenytoin, uh, the impact of using the IV bolus formulas over one that allows for an infusion is very limited. For a 25-year-old, the volume of distribution for phenytoin is 0.65 liters per kilogram of actual weight unless the patient is obese. So to determine that pharmacokinetic parameter from the population for this patient, we're going to first look and determine if the patient is overweight or obese. His actual body weight is 90 kilograms and his ideal body weight is 70, so the ABW over IBW is 1.29. Because of this, we're going to use an equation for determining volume of distribution in the obese. And that equation is that the V in liters is 0.65 liters per kilogram times ideal body weight plus 1.33 times the difference between actual and ideal body weight. When we plug in the values of his ideal body weight of 70 kilos and the difference between 90 and 70, the volume of distribution is 62.79 liters. To determine the IV bolus loading dose, we use the following formula, which says C change is equal to S times dose over volume of distribution. Because it's an IV bolus or an IV dose, we don't need the bioavailability fraction F, but that could be in there if an oral loading dose was used. To solve for dose, we convert the equation to dose equals C change times V divided by S, and if you remember, S is the fraction of dose that is equal to phenytoin. For phosphenytoin, the S is 0.92. So let's plug in the values. 
the concentration change that we desire is 15 milligrams per liter because we're starting at zero and our desired concentration is 15. The volume of distribution is 62.79 liters and the S fraction is 0.92. When we solve that, it gives us a dose of 1,023.75 milligrams, and that would be rounded to 1,000 milligrams. Of course, if we round the concentration down from the ones that we predicted for 15, then the predicted C change would also be affected. So we can go back into the original formula up here and solve for the C change estimated using 1,000 milligrams and that would be 14.7 milligrams per liter. We could also do this by ratio, which would be 15 times 1,000 over 1,023.75. So our target concentration is 15 milligrams per liter. Our dose to produce that concentration is figured as we did before. And what that would look like if we gave an IV bolus is something like this where the C0 would be 15 milligrams per liter, and after we gave the bolus, the concentration would decay away. Now, I tried to point out here the difference that you might see when a drug has saturable pharmacokinetics, and the first portion of the curve would, might be where we are actually under zero order elimination, or a fixed amount eliminated per time, and then later on, as the concentration drops way below Vmax, we go into a first order situation where a fixed fraction is eliminated per time. Let's continue our patient case. Now we're going to determine a maintenance dose, and I want it to be an exact dose, of phenytoin suspension that we're going to give every 12 hours for a predicted CSS average of 15 milligrams per liter. To do that, we need to get the population pharmacokinetic parameters. Let's show what it would look like pictorially for the average concentration at steady state for a drug with saturable elimination given every tau hours. Here's the equation if we were solving for CSS average based on a dose we were using, and this is what it might look like with the CSS average developing. What we actually want to do is determine the dose of the drug, in this case a drug with saturable elimination, that's given every tau hours to produce a CSS average. So after the equation is manipulated, it comes up to be this, where the dose is equal to the VM, or maximum velocity of elimination, times the average steady state concentration desired, divided by Km, which is the michaelis minton constant, plus CSS average, multiplied by tau, and divided by S times F. So let's get the pharmacokinetic parameters. For a 25-year-old patient, the Michaelis constant, or Km, is 4.3 milligrams per liter, and the Vmax is 7 milligrams per kilogram per day. To calculate Vmax, we use 7 milligrams per kilogram per per day, and we want to use ideal body weight because it's been shown that ideal body weight is a better predictor of Vmax than is actual body weight. In this case, 7 times the ideal body weight of 70 gives us a Vmax of 490 milligrams per day, and the Vmax is supposed to be the maximum amount of drug that could be eliminated over the period of time. All right. Let's see what happens when we give the dosing with phenytoin suspension, which has an S equal to 1. Remember, S is the fraction of dose that is phenytoin in this case. And for phenytoin suspension and phenytoin tablets, it, S is equal to 1. Whereas for phenytoin capsules and phenytoin IV, as well as phosphenytoin, S equals 0.92. So here's the formula we use to solve for the dose to produce the desired CSS average. As you can see here, we plug in 490 milligrams per day for the Vmax, which is essentially considered to be the maximum amount of uh, 
phenytoin that the body could get rid of in a given day. 15 milligrams per liter for CSS average, 4.3 milligrams per liter for KM, the Michaelis constant. And what you can see here is I've used 0.5 days for my dosing interval. The reason I use 0.5 days is so that I can cancel out the units from Vmax for day. I could convert Vmax to 490 milligrams per 24 hours and then use 12 hours here. Uh, either way would allow us to eliminate the units appropriately. When I do the calculations, the dose equals 190.4 milligrams every 12 hours, and that would generally be rounded to 200 milligrams. As always, when we use a different dose than the one predicted to produce a desired concentration, we want to calculate the impact of that different dose on the predicted concentration. Here is where you will see the large impact on steady state concentrations from very small changes in dose. Here's the impact of using 200 milligrams of phenytoin suspension, again with S equals 1. The formula we want to use is this one, which calculates the CSS average. And when we plug in our units, KM 4.3 milligrams per liter and a VM of 490 milligrams per day, and again using 0.5 days as the interval, which could be done in a different way. You could also use 400 milligrams per day, and that would cancel out the units as well. The CSS average is predicted to be 19.1 milligrams per liter. So look at that. The difference between using 190.4 milligrams and 200 milligrams every 12 hours results in almost a 30 percent increase in the concentration predicted. So for about a 5% increase in dose, we got a 27% increase in concentration, demonstrating how important it is to be careful in dosage adjustment with phenytoin, particularly as concentrations are higher. Now it's likely we wouldn't leave a patient on suspension for long term, especially if they could take capsules or tablets. So let's see what happens if we switch them to 200 milligrams of phenytoin capsules a day. So with the capsules, as you remember, the S is equal to 0.92. Again, we go in with use the appropriate formula to solve for CSS average, plug in the important data, and for this one, the more important piece is the 0.92 for S, actually then an 8 milligram decrease per each 100 milligram of dose. And the CSS average is predicted to be 13 milligrams per liter. So by decreasing the dose 8% from the full 200 milligrams that one would get with suspension and an S of 1 to 92 milligrams for each 100 milligram capsule, we go from a predicted concentration of 19.1 all the way down to 13. So we've dropped our concentration to approximately two-thirds just by that very small decrease in dose. Again, demonstrating how small changes can have large impact in concentrations with a drug that follows saturable elimination patterns.